Hello everyone, welcome to CS for All. I am your host Sanyul Singh. Today we are going to talk about order complexity analysis. So this is a very important topic when we are talking about algorithms because it actually helps us to figure out if an algorithm is better in comparison with the other. So while building our code, we will see there are limits. So the limits are of two types, either time limit or space limit. The time limit for a particular problem might be one second. The space limit for the very same problem can be one gigabytes. So whenever we are doing competitive programming, there will be a time limit and a space limit associated with each and every problem. Now, this topic is very useful in real life as well. So how do we compare which algorithm is better than the other? Now, suppose we have three different types of car. Let's say the first type is sports car. The second type is, let's say it's the family car and let's say the third type is the cab right now how we will compare these three types of car we will compare them obviously based on our requirements so we know a sports car actually has a very high speed but it also needs a high budget right but a family car it might be the perfect fit for the use case and the cab maybe i need it for a taxi driving service so let's say taxi service similarly we have different algorithms to solve a particular problem we need to choose which algorithm is better for that particular problem so how are we comparing these cars we are comparing them based on the price so what will be the price for the algorithms similarly running an algorithm comes with some extra cost. The cost can be in the form of space, that is how much extra space I am using to run the particular algorithm. Now some algorithms may not take some extra space, but some algorithms might take some extra space, but at the very same moment, they can speed up your time. So we will compare which algorithm is better in terms of space and time. Now for a majority of the problems, time is our first priority, that is we need to reduce the time taken by the algorithm to run and then comes our second priority that is space but there will be some problems where space is the priority and time may not be the priority now depending on the problem statement given to us we will try to find the trade-off between space and time now you might ask how are we going to compare these algorithms how do we actually compare this algorithms? Will it be in the form of absolute time? So suppose one algorithm takes 1189 milliseconds and another algorithm takes suppose 1002 milliseconds, right? So are we going to compare these two algorithms based on their absolute time? So if we are doing that, that is called an experimental analysis. That is called an experimental analysis. I will actually show you one uh, example of experimental analysis but it is not worth the time because first you need to write the code then execute it then know the actual time taken for the code to run then actually plot a graph and then see which algorithm is better so instead of an experimental analysis we are going to analyze it theoretically so suppose we have an input size of n this will actually tell us how much time is expected for the algorithm to run on an input size n. So in theoretical analysis, we are going to say that time is a function of input. Similarly, space is also a function of input. So now the functions can be quadratic functions. It can be linear functions or maybe constant functions. So my quadratic function is proportional to n square. So what do I mean by this? So suppose the input size is n and it takes one second to execute. Now if the input changes to 10 times of n, then this time will change by a factor of 100 that is n square n is 10 here this means this quadratic time is going to grow very fast generally what you will see there are different types of plots for time versus n graph linear plot is something like this when the function is f of n 
the quadratic plot is something like this when the function is f of n square so what do we actually denote this functions as we actually denote them as big o that is the worst time complexity so suppose we are given a time complexity expression let's say big o of some constant and then n n cube then plus uh, some constant and n square then plus some constant and n and then a constant so we will only focus on the biggest value here that is n cube all this will seem to be negligible in front of n cube and we don't need to focus on this constant c because even if c is 1 or 2 or 3 or anything that won't affect this n cube that much so the time complexity of this expression will be big o of n cube right so now instead of this function we can write them as big o so this will be the quadratic function big o n square this will be the linear function big o of n this will be the logarithmic function that is big o of log n and there will be a linear function as well that is big o of 1 so suppose you are given a sorted array or a sorted vector and the question asks you to return the maximum element from the sorted array or vector so you can easily return that because the maximum element will always be present at the very end of the sorted vector so that will be a big o of one time complexity and that is your linear function so in the next video we will talk about how to determine the runtime of an algorithm and we will also show you an example of an experimental analysis so that's it for today's video if you had any doubts or any issues please write down in the comments or you can reach out to us through linkedin we will be happy to help you and if you really feel that this video helped you in any format please consider liking subscribing and sharing it with your friends so see you guys in the next video bye